Hello everyone, it's Dark Siggy here again. Welcome back for another video and happy Saturday to all of you. I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. So you are all aware of my obsession with the Shudderwalk, and it's usually Boltzmann that provides me with Shudderwalk decks. But today we are playing White Delights Reno Nazoth Shudderwalk deck. So the grand plan is relatively simple. Play Nazoth the Corruptor, get the Death Rattle minions back to life. Play the Shadowwalk, get another wave of those minions back to life. And there are uh, quite the selection of Death Rattle minions in this deck. All are very useful. So Kartok Defender for the healing, of course, good against aggro. You have White Eyes in this deck. It's been a very long time since I've seen that played, so I'm very happy to see it. White Eyes on Death Rattle, of course, gives you the Storm Guardian that is shuffled into your deck. There is Tail and Fordring, Taunt Divine Shield and Death Rattle, so lots of value there. But Tail and will draw your highest cost minion. That could be Nazoth, or if you've already got Nazoth, it could be the Shadowwalk. Either way, drawing one of those two on a turn where you really need to draw them in order to stabilise or survive is pretty useful. So I am absolutely loving Tail and Fordring. Ah, uh, what else have you got in this deck? You have the Death Lord, good against aggro. But on top of that, there are a whole manner of tools with which to survive. Uh, Flurgal Toxin Combo, Zephyrus to clear a board, Lightning Storm, Volcano AoE, uh, along with Haggatha's Scheme, of course. Uh, in addition to that, you have Bran and Zephyrus in this deck. And um, Lower Therb to block out spells is pretty good. Hagatha the Witch for a little bit more value, just in case you need it. So, let's have a look at the deck in action then, on the Wild Mode Ladder, and our first opponent is going to be a Mage. So I always go on the assumption that it could be Secret's Mage, and so I like Armor Vendor, the armor is great. It essentially feels like additional health, right? Kartak Defender for the healing is sweet. Um... Plague of Murlocs, I'm just going to keep, because it could neutralise uh, a couple of Crystal Runners, right, if they play them. So yeah, I, I, I like this. Of course, against Mage, against Secrets Mage, I'm always looking for Reno Jackson. Whenever I've had Reno, when I need him against Secrets Mage, I just tend to win the game, because if they've already expended a lot of burn on your face up to that point, you play Reno, heal to 30, they may not have the remaining burn needed to kill you. To bring you down from 30 again. So, yes, Reno Jackson's so important for me here, if it's a Secrets Mage. And it looks like a Secrets Mage. Hmm. Mad Scientist. A card that came out through Nax Ramus in 2014, still seeing lots of play today. That is a testament to how good that card is. Alright, full on Secrets Mage confirmed, we've seen the Archaeologist. Um, to deny them the value on the Scientist, Plague of Murlocs looks juicy. Okay, let's see what Murlocs they get and what Murlocs we get. Oh, that's okay. So, to clear this board, they'd have to trade and ping, potentially. So, if that uses up two mana on a ping, I'm absolutely fine. But, they've decided Kirintor Mage is better, developing a secret is better. Well, I can still trade with the War Leader into the Kirintor Mage, so it just dies. Come down mm, Zephyrus is nice. Value trade is a possibility too, but I like the idea of killing the 4 attack minion. And good old rigged fair game. What a game winning card that is. Just that replenishment of resources in hand is such a big deal. Oh, there it is. You see, that is what I should have saved my Plague of Murlocs for. 
Oh dear. Anyway, value trade at least is good. Is it counter spell? No, it's not. And I just want to get rid of that. I don't like that on the board. Infiltrator is so tempting here, but... Oh, it's runes. Okay. Uh, Infiltrator is so tempting, but we need to kill that. And draw last, because we're good at this game. Um, and we get the Flurgle, which we knew we were going to get. Because there's only two Murlocs in the deck. So we have our board clear combo, Flurgle Toxfin. The ping does slow them down a little bit. Or maybe not. That's another crystal runner, of course. However, the board is clear. Do I want to commit Flurgle Toxfin now? I don't think so. I'm going to be greedy. I want a bigger board to wipe out with the uh, Flurgle. What we have to be afraid of is explosive runes on the Flurgle, killing the Flurgle before we can Toxfin. But we've seen one runes already. And there's another ping to slow them down a little bit. Go on. Commit more stuff onto this board. And I'll just clear it. Secret. Okay. Makes me a little bit nervous. Um... If it's runes, we're sad if we commit the Flurgle. So, Kartut is a worthy sacrifice. Oh, and it's freaking rigged fair game again. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So many cards in hand, so many resources. But again, the ping. We're forcing them to ping on each of these turns. That's really good. So six mana is just to play with now. Although they can do a lot with six mana. They can play a minion and a free secret. And they can damage my face further. That's pretty good. Um, again, perhaps afraid of explosive runes. So, Lothem to test. It's not. So now, we are happy with the Flurgle. And this combo right here is beautiful. It's so cheap to play. And it only targets the enemy board. And you're left with a poisonous Murloc in terms of the Flurgle. That is such a big deal. And every time I've played this combo, the opponent will go all out just to clear the Flurgle. I've seen the Flurgle fireballed before. I, I've seen all sorts in terms of dealing with the Flurgle. But the key thing is it's damage that hasn't gone face. And here with the Cloud Prince, again, more damage that has not gone face. That's such an important thing. Such a big deal. Um, I guess the White Eyes is fine. And I'm going to do something quite cute. I'm going to make an assumption they can't kill Bran, and then I'll play Nazoth if they kill the White Eyes, and we get serious value. Or they go all in on trying to kill Bran, and they waste Burn. You're not ready for this. Hmm. Well, that's a board. And bye-bye, Bran. That's a shame. I should have known better. I should have known that he was going to die. Anyway. Counter spell is probably... An issue here. So if in doubt, play Nazoth. That's good. Absorb the runes. That's really good. Yeah, we 
in a good position. Talion will die. We'll get the Shadowark. Okay, more card draw. You know, we've seen two rigged fair games as well in this game. So the opponent has just done so well with their card draw. It's worth noting that Zola is played in this deck. So Zola and Nazoth is pretty good in combination. Wow. Wow. Both of those targeted the two far right minions. Amazing. But now look, we get the Shadow Walk. And you know what's going to be happening with this Shadow Walk? It's going to replicate the Nazoth battle cry. Question is, do we play it now? Do we need to play it now? Particularly when you've drawn a lightning storm. Hmm. But then if we think it's counter spell. You could just test first with Volcano. Oh, it's not counter spell. Oh boy. That's interesting. I guess a taunt and heal is decent. So we cannot Shadow Walk on the next turn because we are overloaded. But that should be okay. We can go one more turn without the Shadow Walk. We have enough health, I think. Yeah, we should be fine. Unless this Flak Mage goes to town here. Oh god, that's pretty devastating. Another secret? No, Cloud Prince to the face. Ouch. Okay. Oh, hello. Well, that's a useful pickup. Because now we will get the Reno Jackson battle cry into the Shadow Walk pool. So we guaranteed the healing as well. I suspect it's game over next turn after we play the Shadow Walk. Oh, invest your burn on the Reno. Yes, please do that. Please do that. So good of you. I guess they were afraid of Zola on the Reno. Alright. Here we go. There's the healing. No more spells. There's the board full of stuff. And look, we got Jaraxxus. Amazing. Oh, please let me play Jaraxxus. Please do not concede. Do not concede. Oh. Did not get an opportunity to play Jaraxxus. That's so sad. Oh, we'll take that win. And so, of course, it's another mage. Time ends now. So, the six and the one can go. We'll keep the four. I don't know. Should I have kept the four against a mage? If we're assuming it's a secrets mage again? Hmm. Not sure. Anyway. Nothing to do. Fair enough. So there are some other cards in this deck that I've not discussed yet. Such a high value deck. This deck has Spirit Echo in it. So can you imagine playing Nazoth and playing Spirit Echo on your board afterwards? And you get just get another Nazoth back to hand, you get more of those 
those minions back to hand. It's pretty insane. Such high value. And I love it. Um, Spirit Echo on Reno could also be a big deal. Get your Reno back to hand. Heal again. These are cards that I just would not expect to be played. And they see play in this deck and they think they work really, really well. There is a synergy going with this deck. A certain aura to it that is just really good to play with. Um, it's just such a, a feeling of confidence that I have when I play this deck. And that is credit to the deck author, White Delight. Okay. Uh, we get the, the battle cry triggering twice. We test to a flame ward first. I think that's important. Or do we? What if it's not Flame Ward? What if it's Vaporize? <laughs> and then are we sad if it's Vaporize? No one plays Vaporize though, right? But um, if it's Flame Ward, I'm not going to attack because Flame Ward would put uh, the brand down to one and then they ping it off and it's a problem. I'd much rather they do this. The 4 3 trades. Which means it does not go face. I think that's pretty good for me. Um, Hang of the Scheme does 5. Do we need to test for a counter spell? Yes, we do. It's not counter spell. How interesting. It's duplicate. How unfortunate. Well, we'll draw our board clear then. Good old Flurgle, good old Toxfin. To the rescue. But look, I feel very confident with this hand. I have Reno Jackson available when I need him. I don't see how I lose this game with Reno available to me. Okay, go face. Sure. You're late, you're late. Hmm. Is this a Flurgle board? We know it's not explosive runes. So Flurgle is safe to come down. I think we just do it. Nice entrance from Flurgle. And here's the combo that nobody expects. You can see them mousing over Flurgle there. They're like, what the hell is that card doing? As much as I've been playing Flurgle Toxin combo, and I know a few friends of mine on Twitter have been playing it. I'm not seeing it played commonly in other decks. So, it's still a rarity to see. And so I don't think anybody expects it. At least not in the, the meta pocket that I'm in. So it is a bit of a surprise and nobody plays around it. And that's a great thing. Meanwhile, Hagatha's Scheme is charging itself up. Hmm. Many secrets. Another annoying Kirin Tour Mage. And they're getting value here. Uh, so this is a Reno Secrets Mage. Is that more annoying than the, the usual Secrets Mage? Hmm. If it's a Reno deck, what else are they playing? Reno decks tend to be flexible, right? So we can expect more than what we would normally see in a normal Secrets Mage deck. Skull King Geist. See, there's a card that I've not seen played for a long time, and it hits the Devolving Missiles. That's pretty good. That's going to help our Death Rattle minions for sure. Wow. 
The Geist actually did good there. Devolving missiles gone. A spell aluminium trade to kill it. Not bad at all. And look, if the opponent is going to be trading in this fashion, we're feeling pretty safe. Hagatha does not clear the board. But, developing Hagatha, I think is a good call. I think it's a good call. I, I want to start getting value on that passive hero power. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Huh. That's a lot of card draw. Well, the benefits of playing a Reno deck, I guess. Not bad. That's a good pickup. Assuming that a lot of the cards in his hand are spells, that is a good pickup. Uh, we know it's not counter spell. And so board clear seems good. And lower Theb says, I see you. Hmm. Oh boy. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Can't attack whilst damaged. So we did damage the 5 8. Patron Warrior is a, uh, a blast from the past in my brain right now. I'm just thinking back to the good old days when Grim Patrons used to do uh, some quite interesting things. Hmm. So I'm not sure how to play this particular turn. We know it's not counter spell. So I think we have options. The scheme is 11 damage. Do we want to commit 11 damage on this turn? Or do we want to wait for something more substantial to come along? In terms of board. Could get rid of the patron if I think they can ping it. If I don't want to commit the uh, the scheme. But... Oh! Oh, flame ward. Okay, sure. I guess the scheme is fine. I was thinking, can I be greedy and can I just hold it back on it a little bit longer? If we've seen Jandis, maybe there are more minions to come. Maybe the deck is not as spell heavy as I thought it was. Maybe there's more bodies to be placed on the board. But we have Earthquake. Okay, can they clear the low theb here if they've got another secret? And a ping? We have many, secrets. many secrets? Yeah, they do have many secrets. There's the clear. Damn. And now I am thinking counter spell. Hmm. Grizzle Wizard. Grizzle Wizard in this deck without the Finley, by the way. Without Sir Finley. Yep, there's the counter spell. Absolutely fine. Because now we can Earthquake. So we are going card for card with them. Yep, there's Rig Fair game. That's how you win the game. We're going card for card with them. We have Reno in hand. So how worried do I need to be is the question. It's a Reno deck. It's more unpredictable. Perhaps it's it's more minion centric with higher value, more expensive minions. We've already seen Jandis. I don't know. I wow, they play their own lower theb. That's good for them. At the very least, it's a 5-5 body that's going to be troublesome for me to remove. My life is your Interesting. All gods do 
So Grizzled Wizard here just serving the purpose to swap the hero power for one turn. It let me ping off his minion, which is fine. So notice there is no Sir Finley in the deck. The Finley Wizard combo was often used to uh, remove the priest hero power, right? From Shadowy Banduin. But I'm not not seeing many Reno Priests anymore. So maybe just Wizard on its own without Finley is fine. Just for a turn, swap the hero power and get a hero power from your opponent that may be better than your own hero power. Just for one turn. Your wish is my Seems okay. Hmm. Wow, going super wide on the board. Are we forced to play Reno then next turn? That's the question. Maybe we're not. Maybe Zephyrus offers a solution. Or maybe it's Nizoth. If we play Zephyrus, we'll probably get Never. But I'm worried about Counterspell. Ooh, that's interesting. But let's see what we get here with just two mana to play. We get a Flame Strike, we get Jaraxxus. Betrayal? That's juicy. It's very juicy. Uh, I guess we test the counter spell then. But what are we betraying? I guess the lower them? It seems okay. It's not counter spell. Okay, we've just taken some damage off the board. And now added some damage onto the board. Of course! Of course! But look, they're out of cards. Therefore, they've just got to work with whatever they have in hand. I have Nazoth, I have the Shadowwalk. Ouch. Wow. Committal of burn to the minions. What we like to see. But they have the board. And they have initiative. And we are simply reacting to everything. They do bloody hell. That's burned to my face. I guess they were just banking on us not having a Shadow Walk to heal with. I think they were just hoping. But thankfully, we have the Shadow Walk. And, by the way, Zephyrus from the Shadow Walk giving me Jaraxxus all of the time. I absolutely love it. Alright. Deal with this. Deal with this. Now you're going to be rich with almost a Tempo Reno. Oh boy. Do you know what? It's time. You face Jaraxxus! And now, we're just going to generate six sixes every turn. And because it's Jaraxxus, we have to emote. Because the emotes are so glorious on him. The voice is so glorious. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot beat the Infernals then every turn after this. Amazing. Alright, one more game. Let us taste our strength. It is an honor 
And I suspect this will actually be harder than the previous two games that we had. And Demon Hunter being super aggressive potentially. Perhaps putting on more aggressive pressure than the mages did. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about this hand. Uh, yep, it's the more aggressive version. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, here we go. Here comes the stream of aggression on the board. Hey, I got you, friend. That's annoying. Do we just evolve that? I don't know. Or do we just hear a power and pass? Or do we just Grizzle Wizard to get something on the board? I'd have no idea, but devolve into Ooh! Two little one ones. Oh hello. That's interesting. That's scary. If they're playing Lepinome, this appears to be a very hyper aggressive deck then. So this is good value from the wizard here. Sure, we're not comboing this with Sir Finley to utterly destroy their existing hero power. But what we are doing is borrowing a hero power for one turn where it is useful in a given situation. Clear board is very nice. Oh gosh. That's a problem. Um, that could deactivate our Reno once the birds get shuffled into our deck. And we don't want that to happen. That's how we lose the game. So I'm actually going to take the step there to make it a Murloc. Maybe I should have waited until there were, there's more stuff on the board. Oh my gosh. That's going face, isn't it? But it's given us a mana crystal. Now we've lost some crystals. Ouch. Uh, My life is yours. One mana off of playing Reno. How unfortunate. Because... Hmm. How's the weather down there? Gosh. Burn away to ash. Okay, well at least that was six damage. It did not go to my face. Small things to be grateful for, because we would have been dead if there was no taunt. Okay, it's time. Reno Jackson, rescue us, heal for 26, and it's game over now. Oh, okay. They can still do a lot of damage. This is one of the drawbacks of Reno, right? You play Reno, you heal to 30, but the opponent still has a massively wide board, which you can't deal with, and they just continue to go face with their board and they win. So this is problematic, but we do have the Shadow Walk, if needed. Now, I, I, I played that too quickly. I miscalculated. I thought I was able to kill my Reno off with a trade. And then Spirit Echo it back to hand. And I, I completely miscalculated that. The maximum damage on that board is 5. Reno has 6 health. My bad. Also, if I was playing Spirit Echo, should I have played the Death Lord first? 
And then the echo. I don't know. This is me not thinking my turns through well enough and me just panicking and, and playing too quickly. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. We kill off the Reno. We get the Reno back to hand. We play the Reno again. Or play the Shadow Walk? I don't know. Shadow Walk would still be a heal. Come dance to my song. But I, I want to develop a bit more first. Play the Reno again, so we still get the heal. Yep. That's perfect. Didn't get an opportunity to play the Shadow Walk, but hey, it's okay. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, White Delights, Reno, Shadowok, Nazofte. What a fun deck to play. What a really well-constructed, well-composed deck. Um, I've got three wins with this deck on the ladder. So, technically, I'm undefeated on the ladder. Yes, it's only three wins, I'm well aware. Very small sample size of games. But it doesn't change the fact I'm undefeated with this deck and that makes me incredibly happy given the opponents that we faced as well. It does prove that this deck can work well. Uh, I also have played a few casual games with the deck too. Um, but of course it's the ladder games that count, right? So 3-0. Um, so other points of interest with this deck, as you saw in the video, um, Grizzled Wizard and no Sir Finley, but you saw Grizzled Wizard getting me value when I needed it in that one particular game, stealing the Mage Hero Power for a turn so I could ping uh, a minion down. That was really useful, okay? That was good utility on the part of the wizard. And another thing to point out is playing the Shadow Arc after you've played Zephyrus and in both cases, uh, I was getting Lord Jaraxxus, right? In both games where I played the Shadow Walk after Zephyrus, I was getting Lord Jaraxxus. And um, you actually did see me play Jaraxxus in one of those games. And it was pretty awesome. Uh, if that is a common result from Zephyrus via the Shadow Walk, if you are just getting Lord Jaraxxus, that is staying power into the late, late, late game. After you've played your Shadow Walk, after you've played your Nazoth, if you need any additional value, well, if you have Jaraxxus in a slow long game, that's just game winning. It probably means you win the game if the opponent cannot deal with a stream of six sixes one turn after another. So always great to see Jaraxxus getting a little bit of value. So, thank you very much for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been such an awesome video to produce and to make. I've really enjoyed myself along the way. And no doubt I'll be playing more games with this deck probably in the future because I've just had so much fun playing it. Um, until next time then, do take care of yourselves and please stay safe. And I'll see you all again very soon for more Wild Mode Fun.